Well, nice to see you. Where are you talking from? Uh, Chicago. Oh, nice. Uh, right here at my house. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you today. Just checked out uh, Gangs of London. An absolute blast with this season. I was hooked. I ended up binging it. My wife loved it. We're like, we need season oh, yeah? two. We need season two right now. Great. That's good. So I'm a huge fan of your you know, work. I've watched The Nun, obviously, this show. And uh, I just had some questions for you. So first of all, how did you get involved in this project? Well, I got involved through through my friend Gareth Evans, who had created the show while he was doing that. Um, I was at the time making The Crow, and um, I arranged to meet up with him to talk about action. Mm -hmm. And um, he told me he was putting together this show called Gangs of London, and would I be interested in, in directing an episode? And um, when I became available a year, a year later, um, he was just a you know, getting ready to make it and uh, asked me again. And I thought I would, you know, I'd, I'd been a, a, a mutual admirer of his work and his films. And um, I thought if he's doing a show, you know, cause I'd been, I suppose, thinking about doing some television, but always a bit um, skeptical as, as to what you can really pull off and, and was a, you know, a, a firm kind of feature film fan. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't sort of plan on a um, kind of grounded cr contemporary set crime drama as being my first TV show. But it, um, I think because Gareth was behind it, I knew his love of genre and the sort of film aesthetics of his was similar to mine. So I stepped out of my comfort zone and, and went crazy. Yeah, and you ended, did you direct three or four episodes in the first season? I ended up doing... Uh, in, in, in the US, it would be episodes three, four, five, and 10. Okay. So four in the end, and then, uh, and then have been working on season two ever since. Oh, that's fantastic. So the upcoming season two, are you directing all of them? or? I'm directing four episodes, the first two and the last two of eight. Oh, oh that's fantastic. Um, so I guess tell me about your experience directing these episodes in the first season. What's well, like the overall experience like? Yeah. Well, it was a real, um, like I said, it was sort of stepping out of my comfort zone. And by that, I mean, I, um, I, 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 I love horror movies and I'd, and, I, and I'd kind of grown up on them and, and um, you know, I'd made a couple. Uh, and yet I've also been very much sort of inspired by uh, other genres and, and, and action cinema and um, crime dramas and, um, you know, Scorsese movies and Michael Mann movies and William Friedkin films and, and Korean revenge thrillers and um, Paul Verhoeven and John Carpenter, you know, a, a kind of real mix. Um, so this was a sort of, it felt like, again, because Gareth was sort of behind it, it felt like a chance to explore that side of my um, storytelling, you know, in, in, a, in a genre that was grounded and, and kind of family crime drama, uh, emotionally driven, but also with this, when I read the scripts, these, incredible um extraordinary um opportunity for cinematic set pieces and action and um it was the melding of these this world this grounded realistic um crime world with this sort of heightened um genre world um and i felt if we could pull that off that would be something unique oh and he absolutely pulled it off it was just like mind blowing how good the show was, especially at the end. A lot of twists and turns along the way. Thank you. So, as a director, like, what do you look for in projects? Do you just find like a good characters, a good story that you can, you know, really relate to? I think um, that's a good question. I, I mean, ultimately, you're looking for relatable characters in extraordinary. For me, you know, in extraordinary situations within a cinematic world. And the world, you know, it's obviously a very different world to something like The Nun, which was a very um, gothic, uh, you know, throwback to classic horror and Dracula um, and, and Dario Argento and uh, um, uh, adventure movies as well. Um, Gangs was very grounded, but like I saw the opportunity to, first of all, it was very complex. It was emotional. Um, it had a very kind of uh, at times complex plot based around a very sort of simple through line to do with the godfather of london has been assassinated his son's taken over his son's volatile his son wants to catch the killer 
and and who's the killer and and it was an answer to a kind of a murder mystery that was then going to explode out um so f for me it was um I, i'm always looking for ultimately something that's going to emotionally connect and i think with the family crime drama aspect it gives you a series of characters everyone in gangs of london's a villain but they're they're, they're actually relatable and likable characters even though they all do pretty bad things so i think that's important they don't have to be goody goody two shoes characters for you to love them but you do have to love them and you want to see you know you want to root for them and i think one, one of the characters that was i think came as a surprise to us became one of the audience favorites was actually the character of luan who's an albanian yes. gangster who don't want to spoil things for anyone listening but you know potentially could be the the big villain of the show um but you really end up rooting for him <laughs> yeah and uh, as well as of course you know sean wallace played by joe cole and and and, and elliot played by shope derisu um you you've got this variety of characters and then his sort of maternal um mother in 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 marion wallace michelle fairley and uh, and uh, in ed in lucian masmati and you have this real uh, i wanted I found it very attractive that there was a real sense of a world, both in the interlocking relationships of the characters, but in the show itself, we didn't want to do a kind of kitchen sink British crime drama. We wanted to do something inspired by Asian martial arts and horror and Western and, and, and classic crime cinema and, and European crime cinema and put it all into a kind of a mixer and, and, and then find our own tone within it. Yeah, and the show had a lot of similarities, you know, like Breaking Bad or even Game of Thrones, Peaky Blinders, you know, right. characters that you love to hate. And that's what I absolutely loved about it. Walk me through, like, filming the last episode and yeah. what was it like working with the actors, like Joe Cole and the rest of them? Well, we're really blessed with them. I mean, seriously, it was, a, it was, it was quite daunting to come on board a show which, you know, I, I hadn't done TV. I'd only done films that I'd either spent, in the case of the Hollow, eight years writing and developing and you know, ultimately, although it was an ambitious movie, there's a, probably three characters in it. When it, when you get to Gangs of London, you know, you, you're looking at a cast of about 40 and um, or more with all the, you know, the background. And um, just to kind of retain enough um, knowledge of the characters and their relationships in order to inform them, the actors and their performances was a real daunting challenge because I'm reading like, you can't just read your episodes. You've got to read the episodes before and after. And then in the case of doing the final episode 10, um, you know, I've got to know the whole show inside out. Mm -hmm. That's 10 hours of reading. That's, <laughs> you know, that's a lot of reading. And I had to yeah. do it a lot of times. Um, but also it was a new experience to have directed three episodes, which was three, four, five, then 10, and have followed Gareth and then preceded Xavier and then followed Xavier um, and, and make sure the characters you know, arcs, through lines. So it was a blessing to have all of this cast, you know, um, Joe Cole, Chopin Derisu, Michelle Fairley, Lucien, Papa, Pippa, um, Nagas, um, Orly, um, Brian, Vernal, and, and the rest, um, just completely committed to, I think everyone was very excited and, and works were, were really connected into their characters certainly certainly by the end but you know during it and we were able to really explore i mean every actor operates in different ways they all have um different ways of working and preparing and um it was a real experience for me to have such a cast to really find out ways of bringing out that performance yeah and this is like i was saying this is one of the most brutal shows i've seen in a very long time a lot of people die along the way without giving too much away how many gallons of blood were used in the filming of this? That's a good question. If you can hold for 30 seconds, I'm gonna get a, a pump in here. Okay. I've not read this out before to anyone, but I'm gonna for you since you asked. This is the um, crew sweatshirt of Gangs of London provided by Matt Gant, the production designer. Holy moly. This in the back of all the different um, attributes. So to give you a quick one, these are all true. What, 14,428 rounds of ammunition. 12,469 flowers, 4,724 purchase orders, 1,300 pyrotechnic squibs, 1,040 cereal boxes, <laughs> 1,000 liters of special effects cement, 670 scenes, 452 technical drawings, 360 tons of concrete and rubble, 
238 sets, 182 filming days, 141 liters of blood, 96 jars of pickles, <laughs> 36 <laughs> pigeons, 47 liters of baked beans, 33 kilos of heroin, not real, um, 26 <laughs> cars destroyed, 19 caravans blown up, 10 prosthetic cows, they were Ridley Scott's cows for trivia, seven power cuts, <laughs> Six more eight eels, five kilograms of gunpowder, one six foot albino python, and a flooded production office. So that about sums it up right there. That's pretty fantastic. <laughs> what went into that? Just that first one, anyway. Uh, that's awesome. So I'm assuming, obviously, there's a lot of stunt coordinators, you know, shooting a lot of the scenes. Sometimes it's hard to tell. It looks like the actor, but I'm assuming because they're pretty dangerous at stunt coordinators. Um, well, listen. Stunt coordinators are uh, working with Gareth and with, and with myself to design and, and, and pre-visualize the sequences and then stunt performers. Obviously, yeah. there's a lot of them in Gangs of London, but again, to the, to the credit of Gareth for finding Chopin Dirisu, who's the lead in, uh, well, yeah, spoiler alert, but yeah, who, who's uh, <laughs> one of the leads in the show, um, as someone who's a sort of uh, a superhuman actor himself and was able to do 98% of his own stunts. So what you're, the, 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 the mandate or the ethos with gangs and going into season two as well is finding actors who are capable of doing a lot of their own stunts and who want to, and with the right training and, and, and um, rehearsals and working with the stunt coordinators are able to. So that you're really seeing something on screen that's real that they are, you can see them in the moment, in the performance, emotionally connected and performing those stunts. So there's some uh, insane sequences coming in season two uh, where that, that also happens. Yeah, so my last question, I guess, leading into season two, what can we expect from season two and will it take place in a tropical location? <laughs> <laughs> I wish it did. I really wish it did. If it had, we would have had to get up, got out of London uh, earlier right. than, than uh, the zombie apocalypse, which kept us all contained in London. But um, right. what can you expect from season two? Uh, you can expect that we've absolutely um, continued the story on from season one. And um, we wanted to honor what we did in season one, but also aim to surpass it, you know, both cinematically and with ambition and, um, Contain, con continue the journeys of these characters that we've sort of fallen in love with um, and put them through absolute hell. Awesome. And uh, we're looking at maybe later, tw uh, 2022 for the release of season two or not really sure yet? Yeah, definitely next year. I just don't know exactly the release date, but I guess, uh, yeah, some, cool. maybe summer next year. Cool. Yeah, well, it was an honor talking to you today. I'm a huge fan of yours. Love this show. I'm going to spread the word about this. Hopefully everybody loves it as much as I did. Looking forward to season two. And again, it was an honor and pleasure talking to you today. And hopefully you have a good rest of your day. Cheers, Logan. Have a good one. Cheers. Good